siis ma pean tegema panema kaamera sisse. Miks sa teed? Ma ei tea, kas nad räägivad ei seal kui kaameraga. Hello, welcome. Welcome to the Civit Funding Opportunities webinar. We will uh, probably spend another minute to wait for uh, uh, for the ones that are still joining. I want to ask you all to mute your microphones, everyone, and also your videos just to save the bandwidth. Thank you. Okay, I think we can start. Hello once again, my name is Vitotas and welcome everyone to Civita webinar where we are presenting various funding opportunities. Um, these are extraordinary times and we understand that a lot of companies um, are facing financing issues, especially when you need to finance some innovations and innovative projects. There are a lot of companies facing uh, cash crunch um, and uh, looking to different ways on how to how to bridge the financing gap. So we at Civita decided to to help uh, help the market, and we brought together our best experts with uh, many years of experience in in uh, funding and funding attraction, and we asked them to share their knowledge with you. We hope this will be uh, this will be useful. And uh, I will present our agenda for today. First, I will uh, very briefly talk uh, talk about our experience. I will present our three three um, presenters uh, today, and uh, we will go through the main uh, main uh, programs that we uh, that we have information about for you today. And at the end, we will have a question and answer session. Uh, the ones that just have just joined, please mute your microphones. Um, you will have an opportunity to ask questions in the in the chat uh, here directly, and we will answer them uh, after after all the presentations. So as I said, uh, here uh, at Civita, we have extensive experience in uh, in helping innovative projects get uh, get funding, and that uh, scales from uh, from uh, blinds producing solar uh, solar uh, solar power to satellite propulsion uh, systems, and we will actually uh, feature some of those uh, solutions uh, later on. In, uh, specific examples uh, and success stories. And here uh, we have three experts in funding attraction: Sander van der Molen, uh, partner at Civita; Jelena, uh, partner at Civita in Estonia; Yuri Blaft, uh, associate partner in uh, Ukraine. Uh, and um, Yuri will uh, present. Opportunities in EFT Accelerator, Fast Track to Innovation, as, and, and then I will ask uh, Age to, uh, to present the Life Plus program as well as Horizon 2020 uh, calls, and then present the competitive calls for funding. Um, so without further ado, I will give the floor to Yuri. Please, yeah, the stage is yours. Hello, hello everyone. Um, thank, thank you. Не буду довго забирати час у наших. So thank you everyone for uh, joining um, this uh, webinar. Um, 
I will talk about the EAC accelerator, um, which is a part of uh, Horizon 2020 program. Um, internally in, uh, in Civita, we call the EAC accelerator as the Champions League of uh, European innovators. innovators. So basically, uh, it offers uh, quite substantial funding uh, in the form of grant or investment to um, SMEs and startups. So in particular, it focuses and, and, and wants to, this, this funding program wants to um, target high risk and high potential uh, companies and projects that have uh, uh, an ability to either disrupt the market and create new markets uh, or uh, leverage in like in the existing market uh, their innovative uh, solutions. So it aims to push uh, the innovative project, really those high risk projects, to the market. So uh, and and intends uh, to to finance the the, the later stages of of, uh, uh, of the development of the, the solutions. The instrument, this funding instrument is uh, fully bottom up so it supports all sectors and supports products services uh, it supports new innovative business models uh, and uh, you know when uh, when we uh, advise when we look at the companies uh, who should apply? So basically, the innovativeness uh, is is uh, uh, one particular uh, criteria. So those should be innovative and disruptive companies. And uh, you uh, you should already have a prototype uh, to to be able to um, to apply and qualify. Um, this should be a scalable project scalable solution um, with really high potential to to uh, to target global markets not only on your country level but rather on the European or world level and uh, th this instrument funds funds uh, projects that are close to market so this is not uh, not to fund fund the projects uh, that are uh, early on in the R&D stage I'll talk about it a bit uh, a bit uh, later. Um, so, as I told you, it supports uh, SMEs. So you need your company, your organization need to qualify uh, under the European checklist for SMEs. Uh, you should employ less than 250 uh, employees, uh, have less than 50 million in uh, turnover, and less than 43 million in in uh, uh, assets. And uh, when when we um, uh, check the projects and and uh, when we evaluate companies uh, on on whether they should uh, should uh, apply to this instrument, we check basically three criteria: whether the project idea is is really innovative, so, so we we try to uh, select those most innovative uh, projects. So if it's something that you know it's just uh, improvement of existing projects and not that much innovative, then you know it's this instrument this instrument is not probably a good fit. Then we are checking the demand whether there is a real demand uh, for um, for your solution, and here and in this particular uh, funding instrument, commercialization aspect is very important. So we need to show how you you will uh, um, earn money uh, and then commercialize your innovation. So basically, proving that there is a demand uh, that that you uh, understand your customers' needs uh, and then solving their, their pain points is very crucial. Third element 
uh, which we evaluate is uh, whether the company has the capacity to implement this, uh, this quite large, uh, large uh, project. Um, so we are, we are checking the team. And this component is even more important now because uh, uh, after you submit the proposal, you will need to go and pitch your project uh, in front of, of the panel of experts. Those are uh, three, uh, three elements uh, that, that uh, we check. And uh, um, one, uh, um, another, another element is whether you are in the right stage with, with your solution. If I go to the next slide, uh, I want to show you the, the uh, technology readiness level, levels. Um, and the, this particular uh, funding uh, program targets and finance uh, the projects which are at uh, TRL 6 or higher, uh, which means that you already have uh, uh, your technology and prototype demonstrated in a relevant environment. And the grant component is aimed to help you to reach TRL 9. Uh, so, or TRL 8, where you will have, a, you know, your product fully ready, fully complete, tested, certified, and qualified, uh, and then and, and, and the company is ready from the product side and from the uh, company side, business side, to scale up. So basically, the TRL 9 activities, that they are not, uh, they cannot be funded by uh, the grant component, but there is an equity component. So basically, one company, uh, for, and for this specific uh, uh, EC accelerator, only one company can apply, so there is no consortium. Um, you, you have uh, two options. You can apply only to, to grant, to get the grant, or you, you can choose the blended finance. So the grant uh, uh, option offers uh, funding from half a million to 2.5 million uh, euros. Uh, and the, it uh, uh, basically covers those, those uh, activities that uh, are helping you to get from TRL 6 or 7 to TRL, to TRL 8. So it can, can fund uh, additional R&D, advanced prototyping, uh, piloting, uh, testing, certification, demonstration uh, of, of your solution. It can cover IP strategy enforcement and some communication and dissemination of project results. Uh, the grant covers only 70% of project costs. Uh, therefore, the rest 30%, uh, the company or startup should finance from, from their own, own sources. That can be you know, revenue coming from other streams, uh, or it can be investment from, uh, from other, um, uh, other investors. So those, those are um, options uh, to, to cover the, the remaining 30%. Um, the blended finance, in addition to, to the grant, uh, you can uh, also look for investment. And this investment part can actually be used to finance the competitive manufacturing and, and actually uh, uh, market uh, deployment activities that are uh, the activities at TRL 9. Uh, so if you opt uh, for this option, uh, after the, the, uh, your project will be selected for funding, you will, you know, and before you get the money, you will go through the due diligence uh, process uh, to, to determine the appropriate valuation. Uh, regardless of the size of the equity that, that you will give away, the EEC will claim only like 25% of voting rights. Um, so maybe I will explain uh, the case study. Um, uh, as, as you can see, that, that there are 
quite a few different uh, um, examples of, of our clients and they are some are, are, are from energy uh, efficiency and energy generating uh, domain some are from space tech others are uh, in, in the field of uh, uh, innovative uh, uh, business model and med tech um, so indeed the, the projects are quite quite different in uh, in um, topics and uh, um, generally speaking the average uh, uh, project uh, band size band only component is around 1 million meaning that the, the uh, project uh, the total project is around 1.5 uh, million that's uh, averagely speaking so for example um, we help the company solar gaps that are, they are producing innovative uh, smart uh, um, solar blinds uh, so they basically generate uh, the, the energy from the Sun uh, and those those blinds uh, we we started to work with them uh, a few years ago, we helped to secure a phone grant. We did uh, help them with uh, uh, implementation of the phase one grant that was aimed at, uh, at conducting feasibility study. So we did the, the uh, sort of market analysis, uh, determine the, the distribution channel, the pricing strategy, and then prepared the, the uh, uh, like winning an application for phase uh, two, which was uh, previously, uh, that's how the SME instrument, that's how EAC accelerator was called uh, a year ago. So now company is in one year of the, the project implementation. Uh, they got uh, uh, one million uh, grant uh, to uh, finalize the B2B product conduct some piloting uh, and uh, basically have a ready product and then start uh, start uh, producing it uh, in uh, in a serial serial uh, production um, so the next uh, deadlines uh, to apply uh, are May 19 and uh, and the, the, uh, the next one will be in on October in October, um, the proposal uh, itself consists of uh, the administrative part, uh, where we fill in some questions about the company, and then the, the uh, part B, which uh, you know, where you have uh, the proposal, which up to 30 page, it uh, where you need to describe both your project from technical side and innovativeness. You need to show your market. You know, need to show your commercialization strategy, and you need to show your team and uh, and uh, uh, you know, the project, uh, how, how you structure the project, for what you are asking uh, the money. And uh, uh, there, you also need to provide uh, financial and corporate information, and uh, you need to provide uh, uh, and upload a pitch deck. Uh, and with this that pitch deck, you will actually pitch in the Brussels if you are selected to the latest stage. There, um, as I said, uh, there are two uh, deadlines for this uh, sp specific instrument upcoming, and uh, the next deadline is uh, is uh, aimed to to green deal only uh, projects, so it's limited to this topic. Uh, it's uh, I would say it's the la largest round of financing. 300 million will be uh, distributed uh, for, for the startups during the next uh, cutoff in May. Um, and um, for the next two deadlines, you have the gender dimension. So the European Commission aims to, to having the pool of best applicants invited to the pitch at least 25% uh, of applications submitted by SMEs that are led, led by a woman, uh, woman CEO. Equivalent, equivalent position, so that's uh, another chance to uh, for women founders to to apply. Um, those are a big deal of um, sub uh, topics, and uh, you need to make sure that if you apply on May, 
19s you need to uh, qualify uh, and and uh, fit into one of those eight uh, policy areas. Um, now I would uh, talk uh, a bit more about fast track to uh, innovation. That's a very similar uh, program to the EAC accelerator that I have uh, just described, but uh, it uh, it has uh, um, a few uh, a few uh, specific elements that makes it different. So if if uh, the EAC accelerator was mainly uh, about uh, one company applying with their idea, this uh, uh, fast track to innovation uh, is a financial instrument aims uh, to have a consortium of companies from different countries. Um, so the grant size uh, that you can get is, uh, is uh, the maximum is a bit larger. It's at three million. In the, in the consortium, uh, you can have both for profit and uh, uh, and also uh, non for profit uh, research organization. Uh, the funding uh, intensity rate uh, is 70% for for the private uh, companies and 100% for research organization, non-for-profit non entities. Uh, it, and it, it aims to actually bring some new technologies, concepts, on business model to the market within this uh, period of, uh, of, uh, of time. Um, the projects can last longer, up to three years. Um, and uh, uh, usually, like uh, the consortium should have uh, three or five uh, partners, and uh, you know at least two uh, out of three or four partners should be for-profit entities. And if you have a consortium of five, then in this case even th three companies uh, should uh, uh, should be uh, for for-profit and 60%. Uh, of the budget should be allocated to those uh, for-profit uh, legal entities, basically companies, and not research institutions. Um, well, as always, it's better that the um, the proposal itself is quite similar. It's also a 30-page proposal. Um, this year we have still the two deadlines. Um, for this particular uh, funding. Um, next one is in June. And with this funding, you can, you can finance you know, different types of activities. It's prototyping, uh, it's uh, miniaturization, uh, testing, demonstration, um, development of some pilot lines, uh, and, and uh, uh, other uh, activities that uh, that brings innovation to to the market market uh, readiness when when you can can scale up it. Um, an example for for this one is a, a company called Nanoavionics. Uh, we helped we actually we helped them to to secure both um, SME instrument, which is a EC accelerator. And, and then we uh, consulted them uh, in preparation of a proposal to fast track to innovation. So they secured the grant together. Uh, it's uh, almost uh, uh, three million grant for uh, four million project. If we talk uh, only about fast track to innovation, there were two. Uh, other companies, uh, one company from from Belgium and another one from uh, um, Sweden, and uh, they uh, the, the 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 project that will help uh, to bring this nano satellite based infrastructure from TRL six to TRL eight, and uh, actually together with with piloting customers. After uh, op operations in orbit, they will be prepared to scale up this uh, solution. 
this is uh, what I wanted to share with you uh, today about the, uh, these two specific instruments. And uh, now I would like to, to give a floor to my colleague Aga, who will tell more about uh, other EU projects. Aga, please unmute yourself. Yes, hello. I'm here. We can hear you, Aga. Yes, can you also see me? Yes. No. Oh, very good. Okay, hello. Uh, I am Aga, Aina, and I'm from our Estonian office. I am a partner here, and I'm mainly dealing with international research and innovation uh, financing programs. And today I will talk about uh, two programs. First of all, uh, first of them is more focused. It's called LIFE and it's focused on environmental and climate activities. And the second one is very broad, called Horizon 2020. So uh, to start with, uh, I, I start with uh, LIFE. So this is a uh, European Commission support program for uh, environmental and climate actions. It basically supports all types of uh, organizations, starting from uh, private, entities to public and also NGOs and the majority of the program is targeted to uh, all sorts of best practice exchange pilot and demonstration uh, projects aimed at uh, changing policy and management approaches in environmental and climate issues also uh, implementation of uh, EU policy and that field but there is also a specific uh, focus on uh, close to market projects uh, that means they are inviting for technologies and solutions targeted at environment and uh, climate issues so overall the program is uh, divided into two sub programs uh, climate which has 25 percent of the overall budget and environment that has 75 percent of the overall budget and uh, the calls for this year were just launched. The environmental uh, sub program has two stage pro pro process. So the deadlines for the concept note uh, submission are in July, and the full project proposals are submitted after the feedback from the Commission by February 2021. And climate uh, action has. Uh, uh, one deadline for submission of full proposals in 6th of October. Uh, the funding rates for LIFE program are a bit lower than for all the other opportunities we will be introducing today. It's between 55 and 60 percent, with exception in uh, nature and uh, biodiversity field, where the support is up to 75 percent. And the reason is that here uh, it is supported more like large companies, public entities and NGOs. So not so, um, uh, not the ideas in the startup phase, uh, but already established uh, organizations. 
And the project sizes uh, can range from uh, 0 0.5 million up to 17 in case of integrated projects. Uh, but I will introduce them further. Uh, when going for life program, you need to be sure that you are aligned with the topics covered either uh, in the environment or climate uh, subfields. So environment program uh, expects projects uh, that are dealing with nature, conversation and biodiversity on one side, and then the solutions for environment and research, resource efficiency like air chemicals, circular economy, uh, marine and coastal management, and so on. Uh, climate program expects uh, solutions that deal with climate change mitigation, so with renewable energy, energy efficiency, farming, land use, and peatland management, and uh, solutions that deal with adoption of climate change, like uh, water scarcity, roads, forest fires, and so on. And both sub programs have also um, supporting field, let's say, uh, for environmental governments and information or climate governments and information, which is dealing with awareness raising, trainings, knowledge management and stakeholder uh, participation. If a host can turn on my camera, then uh, please do so, because with presenter view, I cannot see how I can do it. Okay, uh, when talking about types of uh, projects, there are three uh, uh, core types. First of all, traditional projects, which is the most common uh, means of support here. And this is dealing with a best practice pilot and demonstration of either policies and management approaches or then innovative technologies in the climate and uh, environment field. The co-funding can be here up to 55%. Uh, for nature and biodiversity conversation projects up to 60 and 75. And uh, the project size uh, starts from 2.5 million. So they really want to see like large impactful initiatives here, uh, with, which are usually in international uh, consortiums. Integrated projects is a very specific type uh, foreseen for governmental uh, institutions for implementation of plans and strategies in climate and environment area that uh, have very large budgets, uh, in average of 10 million and uh, are lasting for six to 10 years. And addition, additionally, there is a minor uh, support for preparing these kind of integrated uh, projects uh, that organizations can apply for, and this is called technical assistance. Uh, additionally, uh, in relation to coronavirus breakout, uh, during the launch of this program in April, new measures were introduced. Uh, first of all, the deadlines were extended by one month. Then uh, the Commission is offering one-to-one -one short discussions about the project uh, concept, so a sort of consultations that you can uh, register for in advance. And now it is allowed also for projects to give uh, uh, financial support to local initiatives, which means that project consortium partners may give out like third party grants for uh, smaller activities at local level. So uh, the activity implementers don't have to be project partners and um, a larger range of uh, organizations can benefit from the support. And additionally, a specific focus is given to startup companies. Uh, as previously, startup companies couldn't really be uh, coordinators of the projects here because of lack of financial capacity. Now, uh, the large companies applying are invited to include startup companies on their side as partners uh, to enable startup companies to commercialize th their technologies and large companies at the same time gain access to their knowledge uh, with the support of the program.
And uh, throughout the program history, there has been uh, more emphasis uh, put on the closed mar market uh, projects, which are basically technology development projects demonstrating new solutions with uh, environmental benefits or climate uh, benefits. And these projects need to demonstrate the technical and business uh, readiness, as uh, in the case of fake accelerator or fast track to innovation. And there are specific features in the proposal to be described in this kind of uh, projects, like technical readiness, uh, progress beyond the state of the art proposed by the project, market pos positioning, uh, competitors, and economic feasibility, and so on. So, uh, life program you can uh, consider when you are a slightly larger company, or you can uh, team up with a larger company and uh, have a solution to provide that to solve some environmental or climate uh, problems. You still cannot see me. No. Mm -hmm. That's a pity. Let me check if uh, I can find a button for that. <laughs> okay, so you won't see me this time. So secondly, uh, I will introduce Horizon 2020 program, uh, which is the European Commission program for research and innovation. Uh, and it's the biggest program ever, uh, supporting uh, world-class science and technology uh, to be proposed by uh, European uh, research and innovation institutions and also innovative companies. The budget of the program has been growing throughout the years. So now we are at the end of Horizon 2020, which has the 80 billion uh, budget. And the new program, Horizon Europe, will be launched in 2021 with 100 billion uh, budget for the next seven years. Um, I'd go for Horizon 2020. Uh, uh, to the size of the budget, also the budgets for individual projects are quite large. Uh, average pro projects start with 1 million and could be up to 10 or even 25 million in some cases. Majority of uh, the projects are funded 100%. Uh, the exception only is close to market uh, activities called innovation actions, uh, where for companies the financing is 70%. It usually has more clear and simple administration uh, than, for example, the structure funds, uh, because the Commission is managing such a large amount uh, of projects. Here, uh, that for example, during the reporting phase, you don't need to submit uh, all detailed information about financial uh, proofs and documents, uh, but still you need to keep them uh, in case there will be an audit in the future. But it's not for every reporting period to be submitted and reviewed. And the submission is uh, central through a participant portal in English language. And the good thing there is that Again, you don't need to uh, provide any supporting documentation or signatures or whatsoever uh, together with the proposal. It's just a proposal application. Uh, but due to the size of this program, there are also a couple of uh, challenges. It is financed through 19 work programs that all have a uh, uh, number of individual goals. So in order to find an opportunity for you, you should go through many, many different uh, work program documents to find uh, a suitable call. Uh, these projects always require partnership and movements at European level. So it's normally in, in international consortiums. The minimum requirement is three partners from three different countries, but the consortiums usually are much uh, larger. Let's say six, ten would be even 30 partners. And as it's opened across Europe, it has a higher, quite high competition, for example, compared to local structure funds. And the management process is also timely, so time to grant is eight months from the submission when I mean, you can start the project. 
This is the overview of the different uh, work programs within the Horizon 2020. The first column, Excellent Science, is um, mainly for research and, research and uh, development institutions. And opportunities for companies you can find uh, inside the topics of industrial leadership and societal challenges. So the work programs of ICT, nanotechnologies, biotechnology, space, health, food, and so on are uh, in this uh, topical programs. And there are also some horizontal uh, topics supporting the implementation of the program. The types of projects uh, finance, that there are three main types. First of all, is research and development activities that uh, are targeted more for basic uh, and applied research. And demonstration and piloting has a more limited part in these actions, and they are financed 100%. Innovation actions, which are more close to markets, uh, should have limited research and development activities and higher GRL that you introduced. So these projects are more into prototyping, testing, and demonstrating of concrete uh, solutions. Additionally, there are um, what we call soft measures, coordination and support activities, that again, so support awareness raising, uh, standardization, dissemination of uh, relevant topics within Horizon 2020. <coughs> now we are in an interesting situation because many of the Horizon deadlines were extended, again because of the virus uh, breakout. So uh, it's good time to go for innovation and communication technologies or health topics because the deadlines were extended from April to June and now it's still feasible to, to meet these deadlines. I have listed here also some keywords uh, of the topics that are financed um, uh, under the open the call. So if you are active in any of those fields, uh, we have a list of concrete topics to be financed uh, at the end of the presentation that we will uh, share with you. And you can contact me also directly to find out more. Also, uh, in August, September, uh, we have the security, energy, and bioeconomy program deadlines coming up. As a case study, uh, I would like to present a Lithuanian laser fabrication technology supplier company who came to us to attract uh, funding for their breakthrough nano 3D printer. We attracted them at the AIC Accelerator that was called SMB Instrument before grant uh, for uh, market analysis and business planning. And later on, we also uh, managed to attract a research and innovation uh, project to them that uh, overall has a budget of 7 million, uh, with Ventica's part being 1.3, and it's composing of 10 partners uh, helping them to bring this uh, product uh, to market. And Civita, we, historically, we have uh, worked with a number of uh, successful proposals, and we are also supporting uh, the partners in implementation, either with uh, project management and financial aspects or the market expectation, uh, uh, IP, and this um, going to market uh, issues. So we have been active in ICT, bio topics. Uh, maybe a good example is also Pro Future project. That is also a 7 million uh, proposal that received maximum points during evaluation. That uh, is focused on um, production of uh, food and feed ingredients from micro Alga, and it has 30 partners, including uh, seven companies who bring actual food and feed products to the market. And there are some more um, examples that you can take a look. And as said, we will share the slides with all the open calls uh, under Horizon 2020 after this meeting. So it was nice to talk to you. I'm sorry that you couldn't see me, and I will hand over to Sander. Please uh, put on your camera before you take over the screen. I will. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so, thanks for staying with us. Um, unfortunately, we cannot offer you a 
coffee break with a coffee. So you have to get your own coffee, but I recommend you to do that after the seminar. Um, thanks for staying with us. There are still 50 p 54 people with us. So um, apparently it's, it's interesting enough to, to hear and listen. So that's good. Um, I'm going to tell you some hidden funding opportunities because a lot of these funding opportunities presented are relatively well known. There are some hidden funding opportunities that few people know, and I'm going to tell you why they are hidden and how you can find them and make use of them. Okay, as an overview, uh, my colleague Aga before presented Horizon 2020 uh, funding programs. Uh, this means there are many different Horizon projects currently running. Uh, and these projects uh, have the obligation also to distribute this funding further. So um, there's an opportunity to apply, not directly to the European Commission, but to existing Horizon 2020 projects to apply for funding. And this funding can be for further research and development, but more often this is for the development of demonstration uh, with first clients uh, in real environments to demonstrate the technology is ready, uh, applicable, scalable, and you can integrate this into existing uh, software platforms or um, try to scale the technology further. Uh, there are many of these projects in different teams. I'll give a presentation of several of these schemes that exist currently. Uh, those are the calls that are now open or very soon will open. Uh, if I would hold this presentation in half a year, this uh, view would change because there are so many projects uh, currently running that have these open calls that uh, in each month, there's a different picture of what kind of calls are open, in what topics, in what area. Uh, but to make it relevant for you, I'll present uh, current calls that are open or will open very soon. So these are opportunities you can already utilize now in case you don't find uh, the technologies or the areas relevant for you. Please contact us. We can help you identify not now, but maybe in the near future opportunities that will open up. Um, I want to start diving a bit deeper into different opportunities. The first one uh, I want is a cluster of projects I would call Next Generation Internet. Uh, Next Generation Internet is an initiative from the European Commission to develop a new type of user-centric internet. Uh, this is language from the European Commission for which they want to indicate we don't like the American model of Facebook, Google, uh, Amazon that are trying to exploit the data and exploit the users. We want our own European internet companies, but respecting privacy, private data, um, that, that users are more in control of their data and they are not being exploited. So you're not the product, but you're the consumer. There are a family of projects uh, currently running under this next generation internet, and some of them have open calls. Um, where you can apply if you have certain technologies uh, relevant for this next generation internet. Uh, the first one is NGI Trust. NGI Trust is an existing Horizon 2020 project that is looking for new solutions to uh, develop trust. So this means online um, transactions, e-commerce or online communication. Can we develop new environment that is uh, enabling the trust uh, between uh, different users. They're looking for artificial intelligence solutions, uh, blockchain solutions, applications, uh, protocols. So if you have already developed or have a prototype or are developing solutions that would generate or develop trust, you could apply here until the 4th of May. So the deadline is quite near. Uh, with different type of funding. So a small project for 75,000 euros for testing the viability, 105,000 euros you can get for a type two project for executing, or even up to 200,000 euros for going to commercialization. You can apply here as a natural person, as a single SME, as a single company, as a research institute, uh, any uh, natural or legal entity or consortium is eligible. So this is one type of, of opportunity that exists uh, currently. 
The co-finance required for this one really depends on the type of project. For 75,000 euros, no co-finance is needed. Uh, for the type three, 50% of co-finance is needed. So one lesson as well to take into account is that each of these calls have different requirements for what you need to bring on technology, who can apply, uh, how much co-finance is needed, uh, what kind of activities are eligible, um, how to apply, how long will be the project, uh, and you have to find out each of them uh, to make sure they suit your need. So I'll present the second uh, example, also in the next generation internet, DOPSI. DOPSI is a project uh, that tries to look at the data transparency. So this is, um, again, looking at the American existing examples of companies that try to exploit your data and you don't even know what data Facebook owns of you and what it doesn't own. Uh, NGI Dopsy is a project that wants to provide more clarity and transparency in, in data ownership and uh, transportability of data. Um, so we're currently helping one company to apply uh, for enabling a solution to transfer data from one cloud service to another cloud service uh, because different cloud services have different requirements, different technological infrastructure, and if you run businesses on one cloud, you might be very dependent on that cloud. It might be very difficult to move to another cloud. So this project aims to get more transparency on data and improve the portability of data. Again, different type of projects uh, can be funded. If you're an individual or a consortium or a legal entity, um, deadline is super soon within one week. Two more. Oh, I go a bit too quick. Two more uh, next generation internet projects. Uh, Pointer and Asset Lab. Uh, these projects are more focused on the first one, Pointer, on privacy by design. So how can you protect the privacy of people uh, using new protocols, new visualization, uh, new network optimizations, e-commerce e security solutions. Um, so here the call is open from April till June. You have more time to apply. You can get 50,000 euros or 200,000 euros. Uh, again, you are, are eligible as an individual or as a legal entity or a consortium of legal entities. NGI Asset Lab is focusing more on new identity and self-sovereign uh, identity uh, protocols and transactions. So here is how can you make sure that you uh, own and curate your own identity. Um, specific call is opened for um, till 13th, uh, 30th of June. Um, here, the requirements are different. They're looking for specific European corporations and organizations, as startups and SMEs, so natural persons cannot apply. Uh, funding is uh, a bigger amount, uh, 155,000 for more infrastructure oriented and up to higher amounts for equity free funding for business oriented calls so two different calls uh, if you're more infrastructure or business oriented do you want to develop solutions uh, and services or do you want to develop more uh, internet infrastructure oriented uh, solutions this on the next generation internet uh, robotics projects uh, there are currently around seven or eight horizon 2020 projects developing uh, new robotic solutions. Currently, uh, two of these projects have open calls. The one project is Agrobo Food, which is a consortium developing uh, and supporting the uptake of robotic solutions in the agro food sector. Uh, the, their first open call uh, is open currently till the end of May. Uh, here, you have to apply as a consortium uh, of SMEs. Um, so only small and medium-sized enterprises are eligible. One or a consortium, no two, or a consortium of up to five. Uh, you have to at least include one end user, so either a food processing company or a farm or an agricultural company, and one technology provider, meaning uh, a company which has developed a robotic solution or a university or a research institute uh, with specific know-how and knowledge. There has to be a cross-border um, element in it, so you have to have at least uh, partners from two different countries. And specific topics are agricultural robotics for crop production, food supply chain robotics, and livestock robotics. 
So it's a quite specific niche. It means that if you are active in this field, uh, this is highly relevant for you. If you're not active, then actually the call is not for you. It's not for the developing of uh, a new solution from scratch. The idea, the call is for existing uh, technological solutions. How can you demonstrate on the farm in real life that these solutions uh, make an impact, uh, are technological feasible, as well as the business wise, they're uh, feasible to sell and to scale. Another project is DIH Hero, which is focusing on robotic solutions in the health uh, care sector. Um, they have an ongoing call till the 15th of June for specific technology demonstration uh, calls or technology transfer experiments. So technology demonstrations means can you show in the real healthcare environment the usability and the commercial uh, uh, viability of robotic solutions. Technology transfer experiments uh, are can you identify robotics developers uh, universities, research institutes, or companies that have certain robotics but have not been applied in the healthcare sector, and can you try to do experiments to bring those robotic solutions to the healthcare sector to see if there's a business case and there's a technology viability. Again, here you have to have a consortium of uh, different legal entities and at least uh, SMEs or slightly larger, larger companies. This should come from at least two different countries, uh, mainly in the EU or accession countries. Um, one specific call, which is open two more days and just opened last week, is related to COVID-19, uh, where you can get up to 100,000 euros for robotic solutions that can help uh, address the specific uh, COVID-19 related uh, problems in the healthcare sector. Um, so we're currently supporting two Lithuanian uh, robotic developers that have uh, solutions that could be uh, applicable for healthcare sector. But the call is still open two days. Uh, it's relatively easy to apply. This is something relevant for all of these calls that typically the application uh, takes between 10 and maximum 15 pages. Not many pages, but it means you have to really think through uh, what you write and how to apply. Uh, what to put in for this COVID-19 call under DIH Hero. It's even fully automated online process for filling in the application to make it really easy to apply. Again, only if you have really a solution, you can indicate there is a real clinical healthcare problem identified here. You're, you're tackling, you have a technology that is, uh, is ready for, for uh, application and for testing. Let's continue. Then there's one call open in the education area, in the impact, impact uh, education tech, where you can get up to 195,000 euros equity free funding for uh, startups and SMEs um, that have already a prototype, have the IP over their prototype, and they can promote inclusive education, personalized learning, and support in skill development. A relatively wide uh, call uh, in the education area. Um, the call uh, are open in April till uh, till December, so there's a long period to to apply. Um, and I expect here quite a lot of uh, competition because it's quite uh, open on scope. And again, we're talking with already different um, education technology uh, companies uh, that are interested in this call. Then there are some other projects uh, going on um, with a less clear focus like robotics, uh, education tech or uh, next generation internet. Uh, we've gr grouped them under the heading technology project. Um, Smarties is a project aiming uh, to support the development of uh, smart and flexible electronics. So we have to look at uh, wearable technologies. We have to take a look at uh, watch, smart watches, um, flexible displays, foldable phones. Um, so quite relative niche technology. Um, this project um, has a current open call till September. Uh, ongoing calls actually. Um, where you can get up to 100,000 euros if you're an SME or a mid-cap, means a bit bigger than an SME. 
uh, you can get support from such a technology uh, project in, in your technology support development, as well as funding to, to bring your uh, technology to market. Tetramax is an other kind of project focusing more on international collaboration between research and universities and companies. Um, around the topic of digital technologies uh, and specifically on electronics. Um, here, there's an existing call till the end of April where you can get 60,000 euros um, if you do cross-border uh, cross uh, collaboration, bring technology from a university or, or research institute to uh, a company that can further commercialize it uh, if they're from two different countries and it's around the field of smart electronics. DigiVet is another project that is looking wider at digital applications, trying to support uh, the uptake of smart technologies, uh, uh, new hardware and software solutions for uh, smart internet and smart digitalization. Um, quite wide uh, fields where you can get up to 55,000 euros um, for experiment projects, and you can apply if you're an SME, a mid-cap, or a startup. Two more. So, if you still uh, can get and grab the attention, because it's it's really an overview of many different projects, and it's not for you to remember. We're not going to give you a test to to ask how much have you remembered of, of all these calls. We'll present you because just to give you an overview how many of these opportunities exist. And I call them hidden because few people are aware, unless they are already friends with people in these uh, with these projects and quite connected. They understand that these projects are there, and that means it's a missed opportunity for people and, and companies that that have technologies relevant and are just unaware about these projects. So I'll present two more. One is the European Data Incubator. This is a project that aims to um, collects and aggregates uh, data sets into a European uh, data set of aggregated uh, big data. Um, it wants to promote the accessibility of data uh, and the use of existing open data sets, uh, especially public sector in Europe owns a lot of data sets, data collected through tax agencies, uh, public institutions, municipalities, etc. So some of these data sets have been made uh, accessible uh, at the European level. And this project tries to make these data sets more accessible, accessible and try to invite um, companies to make use of these data sets and try to develop new services based on these data sets. Here also you can uh, apply to get uh, grants for SMEs or even groups of individuals, two to four people, for solving challenges in various sectors using these existing data sets or bring your own data sets. Uh, last project is 3DP Pan EU. It's a uh, European project that tries to uh, create a platform where 3D printing uh, organizations, companies, and institutes are made available at European level. The premises is that there are many uh, quite expensive uh, additive manufacturing and 3D printing facilities specialized uh, in, in certain fields available in, in Europe, in universities, research institutes, and uh, companies. And I'm not talking about the simple 3D printer of an Ultimaker. We're talking here about the sophisticated additive manufacturing for metal printing, uh, for ceramics, uh, for micro or, or nano level printing, uh, or, or quite uh, bio material printing. So this project tries to make these facility centers more uh, available and it gives support to companies that want to. Uh, prototype or make my, my 3D printed small batch productions um, who, um, using those facility centers. So uh, SMEs that have a specific prototype ready or want to develop a prototype or a small batch of a 3D printing solution, they can make use of this platform to find one or two uh, facility centers uh, to manufacture this for them. So. This is a small overview of uh, current projects that have open calls where you can apply. 
the typical process for application, as I mentioned, is 10 to 15 pages. It doesn't take too much time, but the challenge is how to find these projects, how to identify if you're suitable to apply, if it's in your field or your area. Are your, is your technology, your business eligible? Is these projects looking for solutions that you have developed? Uh, is it compatible? Does it fit your time uh, business-wise? Uh, because it takes some time to apply. It takes some time before the projects are granted. Uh, you have to identify for how long will be the project. Do you need to bring your own co-finance? How to deal with your IP? There are many questions uh, that, that need to be uh, answered. But uh, relatively, these um, projects have a lower competition in comparison to, let's say, uh, Fast Track to Innovation or EIC Accelerator and can be therefore an uh, attractive alternative. Also here, I would like to present one success case. Um, again, uh, a Lithuanian success case. The Volt is a Norwegian company uh, quite well known for their woolen uh, textile uh, manufacturing, so the woolen uh, skiing clothing that you can wear on your skiing trips. Uh, they have a factory in Lithuania. And many, uh, mainly women, uh, are there sitting sewing those textiles. And uh, the challenge the company had was with the supply of the textiles to, to be knitted. So currently, if uh, a sewing lady is done with their, uh, their baskets, they have to take their baskets up, walk somewhere, get a new basket, walk back and start sewing. And this is lost time when they're not sewing and walking around. So they partnered up with the Lithuanian company Factobotics to develop uh, a new robotic solutions to bring those baskets of garments that the, the ladies can, can sew to bring and collect. And this saves a lot of time for the sewing ladies. And that means uh, they can spend more time on sewing, less problems in, in downtime. Um, we helped this company first in attracting R&D funding at uh, structural funds uh, in, in Lithuania. But then uh, additional funding was granted for demonstration in connectivity and connecting it to an existing uh, software platform developed by this uh, existing Horizon 2020 project, L4MS. Uh, they had de uh, developed an open platform for innovations in logistics, a software platform. And this project for, was trying to test can this robotic solution that has been developed during the structural funds project also be integrated in the software uh, systems, the EPR, uh, ERP systems of the default uh, company using this uh, open source Opel software. So this attracted additional funding as well as uh, the finding of this open source solution, testing and experimenting, and saving a lot of time for Factobotics as a robotics company to develop manually uh, APIs and software to connect the robots and the robot data to uh, the manufacturing uh, IT system because they could use an existing open source uh, data platforms. So this is um, an overview of these existing funding. Um, please keep in mind there are many more that are currently open or will open. So please contact your local Civita person to find out if there are calls relevant for you. And with that, I would like to give the word back to our host of today, Vito Das. Thank you, Sander, Age, and Yuri. <clears throat> Thank you for and a lot of uh, very useful, uh, lots of very useful information. And I will uh, go through the questions. If you have a question, I just want to remind you that you can um, uh, ask it in the, in the chat of this webinar. And I will start, um, I will start with the first question about the uh, Green Deal. I think uh, it's, uh, we're talking about the LIFE, uh, life program. Uh, and how much does the preparation of application to Green Deal costs, and is it a success fee? Uh, I would suggest uh, contacting uh, either Age uh, or or Yuri or Sander uh, for uh, for more details. Uh, though we will send out uh, pres this presentation at the end of this webinar, and there are contact details uh, you can uh, you can um, contact directly and uh, and ask for specifics on how much the time does it take about the cost and and, and other other details. Um, also about the live program, what are the rules of particip participation for Ukrainian organizations? 
Maybe uh, again, Age or Yuri can answer this question. And there was also a, a related question about Sri Lankan innovation uh, innovations and how uh, they, they in what ways they could be financed. I... Yes. So generally, I posted my my answer in the chat, uh, but uh, a live projects should uh, take place in the territory of EU uh, member states, and in some exceptional case. Uh, uh, the activities outside of the EU countries uh, can be also financed, but they should be duly justified. So independent if it's uh, uh, if the startup or innovators are from Sri Lanka or Ukraine, there should be some activity happening in in one of the at least one of the U U U European Union states. Is that correct? Okay. Uh, Yes, I would say that uh, um, the the main applicant, the coordinator of the project, uh, should be uh, based in in the EU. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm not sure whether Sri Lanka uh, app, Sri Lanka's applicants can can apply, uh, but uh, Ukraine as uh, associate country might be in the list. So we we, we need to check whether you can uh, uh, be officially part uh, of, of their uh, life plus uh, consortium. With regards to uh, other EU programs presented, uh, EEC Accelerator, uh, Fast Track to Innovation, or Horizon 2020 calls, for all those programs, uh, participants from uh, uh, Ukraine uh, as associated country can, can, can participate. Okay, thank you. Uh, another question, um, probably to Sander or, or Age. What are the main ways Civita can support in obtaining the funding? Yes, I can take uh, this question. Uh, our standard services are a support in the proposal writing. So this means that uh, if we identify in the first phase that uh, we believe you have a chance to to get the funding that means you're eligible uh, you have a right uh, product or prototype or technology uh, the technology is innovative or suitable for the call we believe and you believe that you have a chance to win then we uh, we agree in the collaboration and we help you in the preparation of the proposal this does not mean that we write a proposal for you. We write it together with you because you bring your knowledge, know-how and expertise. Um, we cannot be experts in all technologies and all markets. We have the know-how on how to word, formulate, uh, present technologies, uh, present it from all the angles, organization, team angle, uh, market opportunity, business model, finance, uh, competition, uh, uh, social impact, environmental impact. We understand this from higher level, how to present to evaluators and together with you, we work with you as a client to in the best way present your technology and your business opportunity. So it's a collaboration where uh, we ensure that in collaboration with you, we prepare a high quality proposal. This proposal, we can help you and submit the proposal. And in case it's selected for funding, uh, we can agree about further uh, support in helping you in implementing the project. Sometimes clients say thank you for this funding, uh, we can uh, work alone. Sometimes clients uh, request our support in further help in administration, reporting, and also implementation of specific activities. I hope this answers your question. Okay, thank you. There's another question which is asking, is um, Digital Innovation Hub Hero, is it only for robotics? Yes, uh, DIH Hero is only for robotics, robotic solutions. So that means that uh, there has to be a robotics component uh, uh, in your project. Uh, if you have healthcare solutions that are technology focused, but not robotics, then most likely DIH Hero is not uh, eligible. And you have to take a look at other projects that, that are more focused either on the sector healthcare or more on the technology that you have developed. Uh, it could be uh, cyber physical systems, internet, additive manufacturing, or other technologies. 
Okay, thank you. Um, another question. Can you list general top three reasons or obstacles why companies do not get funding? Maybe I can take this one. Um, so of course there there are uh, there might be many reasons, but uh, I would uh, list uh, list a few of them. First one is that uh, it's a bad fit. So either uh, project does not fit uh, the, the the program requirements, um, or you know it it might be a right. The wrong stage of of the project. Uh, it's too early. For example, uh, the project is at that the idea or lab prototype, but they they are applying for for the ESC accelerator. So the wrong wrong stage might be one one reason. Then uh, sometimes um, I have seen uh, non non successful projects that were asking wrong type of funding. So basically. Uh, the, the the funding that you need does not really match with what can be covered by the the grant. Uh, this is the second uh, uh, reason, but uh, the main reason uh, might be also like not innovative. Our companies or projects are not that uh, that innovative. That's uh, another major reason of of not getting uh, uh, funding uh, and. Uh, if, if we talk about ESC accelerator or FTI, uh, there is uh, there in some cases uh, that there is a weak commercialization part, of the business part of of of, uh, of the product, uh, and too much focus on the technology. Those are uh, top three or four reasons from from my side. Maybe my colleagues can add to that. I guess Sander, can you add something else? Yes, um, I can add. Uh, there is always a competition element. So uh, even in those so-called hidden uh, open competitive calls, uh, there are still uh, more applications uh, than projects to be funded. So that means there are always companies that are not getting funded. And yes, in my experience, this is either uh, people have not prepared well enough the application, they have not read uh, well enough and understood is this funding opportunity for me or not uh, am I eligible uh, or they make uh, mistakes in 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 answering the questions uh, of the application form yes and in terms of horizon 2020 uh, the core is to find a call really suitable for the idea so there the reason might be also that it's out of scope for that particular uh, call. And that is also uh, uh, our first stage in when starting collaboration with the client to find out if uh, the idea has chances to succeed, succeed in this concrete uh, program or in this concrete call. Okay, thank you. Uh, there are some repeating questions. Uh, there's a question about uh, the DigiFed um, about uh, from non-European non Union countries, but I think the question is uh, the answer is very similar to any other EU uh, EU funded uh, program, and we have already answered that. Um, I have also checked the questions on the Facebook live comments, um, and uh, yes, uh, yes, that's it. Uh, we have also been asked about. Uh, uh, the slides, uh, yes, we will share the slides afterwards. Uh, you can also check out the, the Facebook Live uh, recording afterwards if, if you have missed some parts uh, of the webinar. Uh, and if you have questions and you want to talk to someone in our team, uh, feel free to, uh, to do that. Uh, we, you, you have that list of um, of contacts in the very beginning. <clears throat> you can uh, contact anyone from our team and uh, and get uh, get more get more information and uh, get uh, get support from our side. Thank you very much for the participation. Thank you, Age, Yuri, and Sander.
for, uh, for your uh, extensive knowledge sharing. I hope this was useful. Thanks, everyone. And uh, we are looking forward to the next uh, webinars in the future. Thank you, and bye-bye. Thank you all.